Okay, thank you, everybody. I want to welcome our today's keynote speaker for the health tech track. He is a legendary inventor and started four very successful uh, companies. Uh, let's give a big, big welcome to Philip. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the intro. Um, so you asked me to, to talk a little bit about, about, you know, a general thing about my history and all that. And, and you know, I thought that I'd focus on what I do. Uh, um, there's all sorts of people who, who are founders and inventors and, and others who are very successful. Uh, my, uh, my approach is a technology vision and innovation um, uh, to secure core IP and technology. As you may see from my resume, I have 240 uh, issued patents for which I'm the lead inventor, not you know lawyers patenting in my, and 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 that's a very important part of what we do is that creation of IP in the companies that I lead, and it's not the only way to build a company. Obviously, you've got uh, you know if you're Netflix, you have a great idea of of you know stream streaming uh, videos or first shipping CDs or DVDs, and 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 that's a marketing thing, and you can test it and you can develop your idea and all that, but. My my approach has always been to focus on core technology, whether it's programming languages, and in this case, for the last decade, uh, biosensing, actually AI-powered real-time biosensing, and all its application in the medical space, for example, or in the wellness space. And so that's that that's what I do. And I think through 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 the different panelists here, I I heard you know how the importance of data and data is. Is critical. It's critical for several reasons because you know everybody today does AI and and machine learning. When we started this uh, ten years ago, nobody was doing AI or machine learning, which was it really interesting. You know, a lot of people thought that AI had applied to agriculture. It was something that people farmers do for artificial insemination of cows. But uh, gradually now everybody knows that AI is artificial intelligence and what you do with AI and how you use data to build models and actually, you know, refine what you do. And so um, data is so important and uh, creating a, a differentiated and defensible technology platform is, is kind of the number one focus that I've always had in the four companies that I built. Um, of course, the challenges are different. Um, the challenges are, are quite different um, if you start that way, because then you have to figure out what the go to market strategy is. And in my case, in at least in my three last companies, the go to market strategy is licensing technology licensing and, and, and working with great partners uh, in the case of biosensing, for example, uh, People like Nike and building their their uh, wearable platforms and in or or medical companies such as Stryker and others. So that's that's really the the, the next challenge. Um, so our our vision at Full Power is that of a real time non invasive biosensing platform as a service or software as a service. So that, you know, what's really key with all that is to have that recurrent revenue and, and build that. And the first practical application for us was, uh, was sleep and basically building the smart bed. You know, the bedding industry, which is really important, we spent a third of our lives in our bed, um, um, is going from bed to smart bed, just like the phone industry went from phone to smartphone, et cetera, et cetera. And so that paradigm shift is allowing at least at the high end to create new opportunities. And the smart bed is a bed that helps you sleep better and understands you and, 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 and helps you improve your sleep and your overall health. And it goes from the home to potentially the hospital bed. And, you know, I saw, um, there was a there was a picture from a prior panelist that that showed someone in a cardiovascular ICU with all the wires coming through, et cetera, et cetera. But every night you lie in a bed, and 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 the bed should know you know what your health is and what's going on, and you should you should be able to help it. And that's kind of the approach we had for totally non-invasive, nothing to wear, nothing to charge, 
nothing to nothing to to worry about a system that really integrated in the cloud and 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 that goes both to your information and if you let them do that to your practitioners if it's necessary and you really don't have anything to do it's invisible it just it just there and so our first customer was a company the the leading betting company kind of the apple of of um of uh, betting, which is Tempur-Pedic. And so they shipped, they started shipping our solution that was, you know, it took us almost a decade to develop about a year ago, and it's been very successful for them. So it's a mutual great success. And when that happens, you get growth, you get excitement, you get, you know, uh, you get, you know, profitability, positive cash flow, And so everything goes, everybody's happy, as you know, um, happiness in a, in some kind of a startup or a business you build as a, is a positive cash flow. And once you get that, you're 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 very happy. And so, um, so the interesting part of this is that when we developed this platform, we also got a lot of sleepers every night, and we developed this this data set that includes now over 250 million nights of sleep that are very accurately recorded nights of sleep that are commensurate to gold standard medical polysomnography. And so with that data, it opens up a whole new world of what we can do with that data and how we can help people, but how we can build new applications. So I'm gonna share my screen to show you some of the very recent uh, very recent infographics that we developed with that data, which, which I think you, you might relate to. You know, we all sleep and everybody's got a sleeping problem. When you go to a, a dinner party or anywhere and you tell, oh, I know something about sleep, or they understand you do, everybody says, oh, my sleep, I can't, fall, I can't fall asleep, I can't do this, I wake up in the middle of the night, I wake up three times, uh, you know, I can't go back to sleep. Everybody's got a sleep problem, and, or, or, and, and that's a sleep opportunity. When you're, obviously, when you build technology, every problem becomes an opportunity. So here, um, here I'm gonna share my screen try to. Um, so let's see. I'm going to get this guy here. Okay, can you guys see that? Is, is that being shared right now? Yes. Say yes. Okay. See it, yeah. Just give me a thumbs up. So, so what happens with, so this is, for example, over the last three years, we looked at how, tens of thousands of nightly sleepers and find out what happens, you know, every weekend with the REM sleep, which is really important for recovery and their heart rate. You're talking about heart rate. And, and again, they don't have anything to wear. They just lie in their bed and we pick that up uh, automatically. And what we find is that so little peaks you see are our weekend peaks. And, you know, that's when we drink a little wine or, or go to bed later or whatever. All that has an effect both uh, on the on the yellow uh, side and our, our, our snoring and then our ability to, 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 to manage our heart rate. And you could see that with Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's, it gets worse and worse or it gets more peaked and peaked every time. And then right after it gets really good it, that's because, uh, you know, most people after the holidays have a New Year's resolution. Well, it doesn't seem obvious, but this is really important because it allows us to make predictions. And as you well know, artificial intelligence is about making predictions. And so, of course, we don't have the data for this year because, you know, we're basically at Thanksgiving. But we know that it's pretty much going to unfold this way. And so we have lots of other data. I'll share my screen in a different uh, way and of course, all this includes complete privacy uh, and, and everything else. So let me share a second one. You know, a lot of people say, "What happens if your room temperature is 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 warm, or if it's cold, or whatever it is? What's going on?" So I'll, I'll show you another infographic. Do you see that one? So you can see uh, if you see that one. I don't know if you see my pointer. Uh, tell me if you see my 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 arrow. So down you have you have a scale that shows cooler and warmer, and then it really shows the impact of all this on 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 your REM, and 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 that's really really a very important and the part of the night that you 
you spend actually sleeping because it turns out that when we were in bed we don't sleep all the time. this is this is based this uh, this particular study is based on one million seven hundred and fifty thousand lights of sleep so these are very big studies that haven't been done yet um in 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 the medical industry or in the sleep industry no one has that data and 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 because we're a cloud-based system and and we've been operating that 24 seven uh, for for now several years. And so we're working with with, you know, medical uh, organization like uh, Stanford uh, Medical Research, who, who loves the data that we have and what we have to actually build all these infographics, you could see a lot a gallery of these infographics at sleep tracker ai.com. And that will show you all sorts of information about your apnea about your snoring etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's just what we do with the data that we inherit from building that technology platform so i'm going to stop sharing my screen right now okay so i'm back here so because sleep is so important to all of us it, it, it it's really cooking because it's a third of our lives we spend a third of our lives sleeping but we don't know much about sleep in fact you know, when I when I give a speech to a very large a, a very large conference, we don't do those these days uh, with COVID. But yeah, I always ask who sleep wh who slept too much last last night, and usually there's always one smart person who says, you know, yeah, I slept too much. Everybody else says, no, I wish I had slept more. I mean, sleep is a predictor of your performance from. Uh, the moment you get up to the moment you go back to bed for the next to the next uh, to the next night, uh, both your performance in terms of physical activity, if you're if you work out uh, mental acuity, you know, how, how, you know, you play a better chess game if you sleep well or not. And, and of course, your emotional capability because Sleep, uh, lack of sleep and stress are connected together, and it's kind of the thing. So that is the first application that we 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 build with our um, interactive, real time uh, AI powered biosensing platform. It took a lot of work, you know. That we're, we're in our company, uh, we are all basically people who are scientists and 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 have doctoral specialties in, in, in different key components of, of, of the technology that we build. And, and it allows us to, to really create an edge and something new that nobody had done. And thanks to a, a, a excellent partnership, strategic partnership with a, uh, Tempur-Pedic, the, the leading embedding, we're able to actually move this into the medical space from the wellness space, which is, you know, what Tempur Pedic does. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity because sleep is tied to a lot of, um, a lot of uh, conditions, including diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, um, uh, cardiovascular conditions. They're all come with signposts that you can pick up and sleep. In fact, <laughs> through our history, we have some interesting situations where we even had uh, people, you know, we have so many users, you know, we're 100,000 nightly users. Um, we have people die in their sleep. And if you have someone die in their sleep out of them, you, you go, you, nobody knows why they died, but we, we know because all their vital signs, including the moment of their, their death and afterward, because it takes a while, a while for things to unwind, are there. And so we, we have a fantastic data opportunity to build many other um, applications like uh, discovering diabetes, pre-diabetes, changing over time um, of your health conditions, because sleep changes over time as you get older, it becomes different. That's been our, our whole focus. So my passion is really technology. Um, innovation and invention and and and, and building uh, what makes sense and I tend to focus on one thing at a time as opposed to you know some people do a lot of things but this is just one way to build a business and then you can build Twitter or Netflix and it's a very different way where you don't need to to do a lot of 
uh, a lot of this exploration through very deep technology. But because I'm a mathematician and inventor, uh, then my focus is really on what I'm good at. And what I've learned through the years is that focus is everything. It's like, it's like distractions are, are, are the worst thing that happens and focus and perseverance. So that's kind of my intro, David. And I don't know if you have any questions or, or remarks or whatever. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Philip. I learned a lot about the sleep today. Actually, I have an uh, oriental medicine doctor. He's my uh, acupuncture practitioner. Uh, he told me that uh, my, you know, in my of his speech, that the number one impact to people's human health, other than gene, is sleep. So, uh, so sleeping is the most important uh, uh, factor in people's uh, life, in which impact people's health. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you about uh, the full power because you are the mathematician and the inventor and tech, tech, very technical guy. I never imagined, but I saw full power in the first time in a few years ago. And they're all, Philip is doing a sleeping company. So maybe you can tell us uh, in the long run, let's just give another few years. What do you see uh, full power's um, product looks like? Uh, uh, so maybe give us some ideas. <clears throat> well, for us, the opportunities are, so we already have a fantastic opportunity with our partnership with Tampa Pedic, but our opportunities is, you know, sleep apnea is something that, that comes, uh, that comes to haunt most, at least males predominantly, predominantly uh, past 40 years old, most people develop some form of apnea. Um, you'll see if you go to the galleries of, 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 of infographics that I gave you, that apnea is not something that you have, and then it's constant over time. In fact, the, the sleep medic medicine community thought that was the case because they never had a system like ours. What we found is that it changes every night. And so you may go to a sleep lab, they might tell you, no, you don't have apnea, or you have you have uh, obstructive apnea, but you don't have central apnea. But it may change tomorrow, and it changes over time. And so the ability to completely non-invasively be able to monitor that and help people live their lives through these challenges is a great opportunity for us because it changes, you know, it turns upside down the opportunity with apnea. And that's something that we're pursuing, uh, obviously, uh, clearly now. But early diagnosis of, you know, uh, um, an early diagnosis is always better than a cure. If you can pinpoint to people through uh, their sleep analysis that their, their, their ability to, to, their metabolism is changing enough that they might develop something that such as uh, type two diabetes uh, over time and pre-diabetes, then you can help them avoid that. And so it, it, it's really those opportunities that we are looking at, which is leveraging the massive amounts of data and the technology that we build, the completely non-invasive biosensing platform that we build to actually enable these opportunities. That's what we look at for power. And that's why we're so excited about what we do and, and, and what we build. So the, the opportunities are infinite, but just the opportunity of the paradigm shift from bed to smart bed itself is a huge opportunity for us because we're fortunate enough to be uh, partnered with a leader in the space who basically embed our technology in all their their high-end beds and one of the things i didn't say is that technology is pretty smart we actually if you if you're caught snoring which you know over 50 percent of people over 50 uh, do uh, we actually, in real time, detect that without a microphone for all privacy reasons. And we automatically change the geometry of the bed to reduce your snoring because research shows that um, if you change the inclination of the upper body, then you minimize snore. And, and of course, snore is a precursor of, um, uh, of conditions such as apnea. And therefore, it, it, it's actually a very simple way to help people. So all this, you know, starts with what we're doing today. But then we have all these other opportunities. And the, the key is, 
is is to be focused. I think that's you know we're we're fortunate enough to have all these opportunities. And uh, you know one of the things uh, that happened with COVID, and I think probably a lot of you who are in the health um, care business find out is that at first it was a it, it looked like a challenge, but because COVID focused people on their health, um, actually fo- COVID is an accelerator for any uh, real healthcare opportunity. And for us, it was a, a great accelerator. Okay, great. Thank you, Philip. I have one question uh, for you. Since in our audience, in the room, there are lots of different investors in the room as well, and lots of entrepreneurs. My question to you is that uh, as an uh, inventor and a mathematician, so what are the other opportunities you saw when you started full power, particularly in the health tech space, you think with uh, technology could uh, significantly improve, uh, improve? Maybe opportunities as a startup or investment. You mean the opportunities for, to invest in startups? Not, not the full power, just in general for the industry. Is there well, any- invest in, 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 So the opportunities to invest in health, healthcare startups for, for an investor. Yes. And entrepreneurs as well. Or for an entrepreneur. Yeah, well, they invest their time. So <laughs> that's what we do as entrepreneurs. Uh, I think that we have to be careful. Uh, it's very easy to come up with great ideas. Um, a perfect example of that in the, in the health industry is uh, diabetes is a huge problem in, in the world. It's probably one of the biggest problems everywhere in the world, whether it's the U.S. and China now, in India, um, Korea, everywhere in the world, and Israel, everywhere you want diabetes. So billions of dollars have been spent, and um, billions of dollars have been spent in trying to create a non-invasive diabetes monitor. It's a great idea. I go out and say, yes, I have an idea for, for non-invasive di- um, uh, diabetes monitor, and I'm gonna go measure a bunch of things, you know, current through your ears, your nose, I'm gonna, uh, and it hasn't worked. People says it's really a hard technology problem. The idea is easy, the concept is easy, the vision's easy but the technology hasn't been solved. In fact, as you know, Google tried to do it with kind of contact lenses that measure your, the, the, the glucose content in your tears and stuff like that. That's a difficult problem. And I think one of the traps in, 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 in the healthcare ring is to have an idea. I'm gonna solve whatever, the, the, the stroke, because everybody gets stroke. So I'm gonna build a device that can, uh, you know, great idea that, People will wear forever and will monitor the fact that they may get a, a stroke. And, and, and the question is, is this really going to work? And what's going to happen when the first false positive or false negative will happen? And will people really wear it? Will people will really charge it? How invasive is it? How does it work? And in fact, in the case of diabetes, to close the circle, you'll find that um, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, uh, Glucose, new glucose monitors uh, like the Dexcom and all that. Well, they're invasive in the way that you have to you have to put something in your arm in your body, and it kind of measures it, and you have to change it every couple of weeks. And once in a while, you get an infection, and uh, you get people who use it. It it it's great, but it's challenging. And so, I think the biggest challenge in 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 healthcare is 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 that it's very easy to have a vision to. To, to cure cancer or do whatever it is, it's much harder to turn it into a real problem. And so the opportunities are really to look at things that are realistic to build and that are going to work in, in, in what way. And so one of the one of the challenges that people have is that is that um, the world is not ready to have all these invasive things that the People will wear on their ankle, on their uh, in their pocket, or whatever it is. Uh, people already have, you know, a smartphone. Already have potentially an Apple Watch or a Samsung Watch, um, um, and and it's hard to tell in a meaningful way of people to wear more things. So, I think that 
the future of, of healthcare in terms of helping um, everyone is, is really to create invisible technology that delivers that. But the other kind of opportunities is really the fact that medicine today is, has been, until COVID, has been something where you, everybody goes into a doctor's office. So basically you look at the doctor's office. It used to be many years back that doctors would visit the home, but now the model where all the six people convey, converge in, in, into the doctor's office every day uh, to, because they're sick. And, and so the remote, the remote, the, the idea of, of, of dealing with health remotely, non-invasively, is I think a very powerful idea. Nobody's yet delivered uh, you know, successfully on that. I think that's a huge opportunity, but it's an opportunity that requires a lot of capital and, 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 and a lot of, uh, you know, basically a lot of data. And so those are the kind of opportunities that personally I see in the thing. I'm always challenged in seeing, you know, unless you're, 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 you're treating something very special. Uh, for example, someone has, has paralysis of, or, neuropathy in their leg and you create a device that helps them walk again and do something. Uh, um, and, and, and there are plenty of companies that do that. Then in that case, you have something that's very focused. But the general purpose idea is, is very challenging. It's, it's a bit the same thing as in the opportunity in software. Uh, people say, oh, geez, you know, everybody uses a word processor. Therefore, you know, if I only get half a percent of the market, I'm going to be a billionaire. The problem is you can't get it. And I think a lot of these opportunities in healthcare are going to be the same thing. It's going to be that there are some great ideas, but the reality of the matter is how can you deliver something practical? And so that's how I see it. But then again, my, my vision is very skewed because I'm an inventor. I build technology and I I try to, to think about what new uh, frontiers we can conquer, conquer with that technology. And as opposed to try to simply say, I'm gonna solve diabetes, or I'm gonna solve a uh, stroke, or I'm gonna solve whatever it is. Do you, uh, I hope this makes sense. We can't hear you. You have successfully sold three companies. Last of sold for 200, a couple 200 million dollar, more than 200 million dollar company. That's 15, 20 years ago. More, that's more than 22 billion dollar companies for, for sold today. So one question I'm curious about, uh, why you become a, not become an investor and start a, instead start a new company? Have you thought about uh, uh, support more entrepreneurs or do you still prefer being the hands-on to do the work? Ah, uh, <laughs> the, the reason is very simple. I love what I do. I like building things. I like technology. I, I'm, I actually write code and I, I'm part of, of the invention and the thing at work. I love doing that. That's what I do. And, and, and so it's hard to do, you know, you become an investor in company alpha or beta or delta or gamma and and you go and talk to the guy says hey you know have you checked you know how you guys are i, I don't want to do that which is kind of what i do which is look at you know uh work with the technology architecture and all that and that's what my passion and i i that's what i want to spend my time on but then again you know uh, i i do mentor people uh, i do mentor people who who, who are doing an interesting thing. But my, I think for me, focus is, is, is everything. Focus, perseverance, and, and, and patience. I think they're everything. And of course, assembling a great team. But I think I don't want to defocus myself from what I do. When the moment I, 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 I get up, I think, okay, what am I going to do today to improve what we do? And when I go to bed is, is, what did I do today to improve what we do? Besides other things like personal things and all that. But that that's, and if I have to think about five different companies like that, or if I have to worry about my money, 
uh, and what are they going to do with it? I'd rather put my money in people who are pro at, at managing uh, at managing money, like being a limited partner in a venture capital fund. And I don't even want to know what they invest in uh, because I don't want to get involved, uh, you know. But but I'm much more interested in personally using my time that way. But then, then again, I do mentor people sometimes and, 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 and help people out. I'm always happy to help people out. But myself getting directly involved, I just avoid board positions and all that stuff because I, I, I just don't have the time and the focus. I'm just focused on the success of Full Power AI and our Sleep Tracker AI platform. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other members in the panel would like to ask a Philip a question? I think it's time, time is limited. Maybe one quick question. Just Philip, is the platform available or will it be available in the future beyond Tempur-Pedic or is it exclusive to them forever? Um, <laughs> uh, nothing is forever. Maybe herpes, but uh, besides, besides that, I mean, nothing is, uh, n n nothing's really forever, um, but for sure, we 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 have an agreement with them. We operate this platform as a platform as a service, and as so, we we operate the whole system and and and, and design the hardware and and do all that. And so, for the next but six years, uh, for sure, you know, it's a it's a very exclusive relationship between both companies. Uh, however, that's for the wellness market. Uh, and the betting market, but in the medical market, we, we, we work with many, many, many partners. Thank you. I have one question. Uh, so this is Maithili. Hi, thank you for a great presentation and thank you for giving us all the information on sleep. I'm very curious because I come from an R&D background about the whole problem of just having a smart bed and not having any sensors that the person wears. Uh, but probably still being able to monitor like sleep apnea and the sleep patterns. So anything you can tell us about really uh, uh, you are able to share with some kind of cool things that you did in hardware and software for that, that would be awesome. Yes, absolutely. So our system is a cloud edge cooperative processing system where the models are run part on the cloud and part on the edge. And so uh, in the in the development process of the system, uh, we started in 2014 to operate two full medical polysomnography labs with uh, with um, medical technicians that and 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 collect information and and try to understand what was going on and basically. Uh, create all that labeled data that we had to create our initial models. And then we experimented um, with building sensors that could work with any bed and any mattress, under any mattress. So, so basically, can you actually, you know, you have a, a, a 10 centimeter uh, thick mattress or a, a a 40 centimeter mattress made out of springs. Can you can the AI figure it out what we are doing? And can the AI differentiate, for example, what happens with two sleepers? It turns out that um, it turns out that two beds out of three have two sleepers, and sometimes more when they have pets and kids that come in. So we said, can we solve that problem? It's a very difficult problem because if you're trying to monitor people's heart rates and 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 and, and motion, et cetera. You know how do you how do you separate the signals? And if you try to if you try to solve that problem from a classic signal processing approach, it's a very difficult problem to solve, and probably impossible. But so we develop using polysomnography labs over two sleepers, which nobody had done because all the sleep labs is only a one sleeper thing. So we spent a lot of time. Uh, and, and, and energy building all these models and, and, and that label data and make sure that it's accurate labeled there. And then through the development process, we understood what we needed to build at the um, bed sensor level, as well as in the cloud and how the real time processing of the data would happen. And that's part of uh, an iterative process of creating models, moving the model, splitting the model and using 
the the big data set that we're building to continually improve the algorithm so that at the end you have something that's commensurate with gold standard polysomnography. Awesome, thank you. Must be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I know, uh, Philips, your time is very precious and I really appreciate all your uh, information sharings. Uh, and I really hope one day you can give our uh, um, winners a little bit time to, uh, to meet them. But uh, again, thank you for your time and uh, uh, wish you uh, full power to have a great success. I look forward to see you when I come back to Palato. Uh, thank you for having us and uh, great presentation everywhere. I was, uh, everyone, I was, I was listening.